been the center of conversation for the last four years, a long-standing government cast aside. After Thursday, I will no longer be Ontario's Premier. A new party sweeping into power. This is your victory. Tonight is your night. And a Premier who got swept up in politics. What followed were some of the most eventful years in Ontario's political history. A scandal over an OPP commissioner. There was no better choice, a transparent choice, by the way, that I wasn't involved in whatsoever. A battle with the city of Toronto. It is the most dysfunctional political arena in the country, City Hall. A fight with Ontario's teachers. And a budget chock full of cuts. We have developed a reasonable, path to balance. His polling plummeted as Doug Ford faced a dissatisfied public. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Ontario has confirmed its second presumptive case. But then the Premier was presented with a significant challenge, one that no other Premiers faced in a hundred years. We will not lose this battle. We will get ahead of this. COVID-19 gave Ford a second chance, and he rose to the occasion. All done. <laughs> but brimming with confidence, Ford was soon accused of ignoring medical advice, sending Ontario spinning in a cycle of waves and lockdowns. Caught in the middle, two million Ontario students, thousands of Ontario business owners, seniors in long-term care, and the health care system on the brink. It's absolutely shocking that it seems once again the Ford government has forgotten about long-term care. How can that possibly be? The strain led to a fractured caucus, unpopular cabinet decisions, and tearful apologies. I'm sorry. I'm sorry we acted uh, too quick. Then the government changed direction and focused on the election, promising to fix long-term care, invest in hospitals, build schools, and help the working class of the province. The gambit paid off. The progressive conservatives were back on top of the polls. Now, the question for voters, give Doug Ford a second term in office or pick a new premier. During the campaign, the NDP leader made her case. He's just not ready uh, to form a government, but we are. Horvath promised to invest in health care, in education and in people. But public confidence in Horvath began to fall. Can she climb back? Next leader of the Ontario Liberal Party and the next Premier of Ontario, Mr. Stephen Del Duca. He is the new leader on the block, chosen to bring the Ontario Liberals back from the ashes and back into government. Stephen Del Duca made a pitch to the province. The party under him has changed. Ontario Liberals have put forward more new ideas that are compelling, that will make life better and more affordable for the people of this province. Can Del Duca defy expectations? I'm looking forward to electing more green MPPs to join me at Queen's Park. And could Ontario history be made by electing a second Green Party member? A debate performance that seemed to win over voters. How many will give Mike Schreiner's party a try? After four chaotic years, this is where we stand. Doug Ford's Progressive Conservatives, 67 seats. Andrea Horvath's NDP, 38 seats. Stephen Del Duca's Liberals have seven seats and Mike Schreiner's Greens at one seat. Tonight, voters will have their say over what the Ontario Legislature will look like for the next four years. Erica Vella, Global News.